What is a two-way ANOVA? A two-way ANOVA is a statistical method used to test the effect of two categorical variables on a continuous variable. The categorical variables are the independent variables, for example, the variable drug type with drug A and B and gender with female and male. And the continuous variable is the dependent variable, for example, the reduction in blood pressure. So, the two-way ANOVA is the extension of the one-way ANOVA. While a one-way ANOVA tests the effects of a single independent variable on a dependent variable, a two-way ANOVA tests the effects of two independent variables. The independent variables are called factors. But what is a factor? A factor is, for example, gender of a person with the levels male and female, type of therapy with therapy A, B and C, or the field of study with medicine, business administration, psychology and mathematics. In an analysis of variance, a factor is therefore a nominal variable. We use an ANOVA whenever we want to test whether these levels have an influence on the so-called dependent variable. You might want to test whether gender has an effect on salary, whether therapy has an effect on blood pressure or whether field of study has an effect on length of study. Salary, blood pressure and length of study will then be the dependent variables. In each of these cases, you test whether the factor has an effect on the dependent variable. Since you only have one factor in these cases, you would use a one-way ANOVA. Ok, you're right. In the first case, we have a variable with only two categories, so of course we would use the independent samples t-test. But when do we use a two-way ANOVA? We use a two-factor analysis of variance when we have a second factor and we want to know whether this factor also has an effect on the dependent variable. We would also like to know whether, in addition to gender, the highest level of education has an impact on salary. Or we would like to include gender in addition to type of therapy. Or in the third case, we would also like to know whether the university attended, in addition to the field of study, has an influence on the length of study. Now we don't have one factor in all three cases, but two factors in each case. And since we now have two factors, we use a two-way analysis of variance. So in a one-way ANOVA, we have one factor from which we create the groups. If the factor we are looking at has three levels, for example, three different types of drug, we will have three groups to compare. In the case of a two-way analysis of variance, the group results from the combination of the levels of the two factors. If we have one factor with three levels and one with two levels, we have a total of six groups to compare. But what kind of statements can we make with a two-way ANOVA? With the help of a two-way ANOVA, we can answer three things. Whether the first factor has an effect on the dependent variable, whether the second factor has an effect on the dependent variable and whether there is an interaction effect between the two factors. But what about the hypotheses in a two-way ANOVA? There are three null hypotheses and therefore also three alternative hypotheses. The first null hypothesis is there is no significant difference between the groups of the first factor. And the alternative hypothesis, there is a significant difference between the groups of the first factor. The second null hypothesis is, there is no significant difference between the groups of the second factor. And the alternative hypothesis, there is a significant difference between the groups of the second factor. And the third null hypothesis reflects the interaction effect. One factor has no effect on the effect of the other factor. And the alternative hypothesis, at least one factor has an influence on the effect of the other factor. And what about the assumptions? For the test results to be valid, several assumptions must be met. Number one, 
normality. The data within the groups should be normally distributed. Or alternatively, the residuals should be normally distributed. This can be checked with a quantile-quantile plot. Number 2. Homogeneity of variances. The variance of theta in groups should be equal. This can be checked with the Levine's test. Number 3. Independence. The measurement should be independent, i.e. the measured value of one group should not be influenced by the measured value of another group. Number 4. Measurement level. The dependent variable should have a metric scale level. But how to calculate a two-way ANOVA? Let's look at the example from the beginning. We would like to know if drug type and gender have an influence on the reduction in blood pressure. Drug type has the two levels drug A and B and gender has the two levels male and female. To answer the question we collect data. We randomly assigned patients to the treatment combinations and measured the reduction in blood pressure after a month. For example, the first patient receives drug A, is male and after one month a reduction in blood pressure of 6 was measured. Now let us answer the questions. Is there a main effect of drug type on the reduction in blood pressure? Is there a main effect of gender on the reduction in blood pressure? And is there an interaction effect between drug type and gender on the reduction in blood pressure? For the calculation we can use either a statistical software like DataTab or do it by hand. First I will show you how to calculate it with DataTab and how to interpret the results. At the end I will show you how to calculate the ANOVA by hand and go through all the equations. To calculate a two-way ANOVA online, simply visit datadep.net and copy your data into this table. Then click on Hypothesis Test. Under this tab you will find a lot of hypothesis tests and depending on which variable you select, you will get an appropriate hypothesis test suggested. We want to know if drug type and gender have an influence on the reduction in blood pressure. So let's just click on all three variables. DataTab now automatically gives us a two-way ANOVA. We can read the three null and the three alternative hypotheses here. Afterwards we get the descriptive statistics and the Levine test for equal variance. With the Levine test we can check if the variances within the groups are equal. The p-value is greater than 0.05 so we assume equality of variance in the groups for this data. And here we see the results of the analysis of variance. We'll look at these in more detail in a moment. But if you don't know exactly how to interpret the results, you can also just click on Summary in words. In addition, you can check here if the requirements for the analysis of variance are met at all. But now back to the results. Let's take a closer look at this table. The first row tests the null hypothesis whether drug type has an effect on the reduction in blood pressure. The second row tests whether gender has an effect on the reduction in blood pressure. And the third row tests if the interaction has an effect. You can read the p-value in each case right at the back here. Let's say we set the significance level at 5%. If our calculated p-value is less than 0.05, the null hypothesis is rejected. And if the calculated p-value is greater than 0.05, the null hypothesis is not rejected. Thus we see that all three p-values are greater than 0.05 and therefore we cannot reject any of the three null hypotheses. Therefore, neither the drug type nor gender have a significant effect on the reduction in blood pressure. And there is also no significant interaction effect. But what does an analysis of variance actually do? And why is the word variance in analysis of variance? In a two-way analysis of variance, the total variance of the dependent variable is divided into the variance that can be explained by factor A, the variance that can be explained by factor B, the variance of the interaction and the error variance. 
Actually, SS is not the variance, but the sum of squares. We will discuss how to calculate the variance in this case in a moment. But how can I imagine that? The dependent variable has some variance. In our example, not everyone will have the same reduction in blood pressure. We now want to know if we can explain some of this variance by the variables drug type, gender and their interaction. The part that we cannot explain by these three terms accumulates in the error. If the result looked like this, we would be able to explain almost all the variance by factors A and B and their interaction. And we would only have a very small proportion that could not be explained. This means that we can make a very good statement about the reduction in blood pressure by the variable drug type, sex and interaction. In this case, it would be the other way around. Drug type, gender and the interaction almost have no effect on the reduction in blood pressure and it all adds up in the error. But how do we calculate the sum of squares, the F value and the P value? Here we have our data, once drug type with drug A and B and once gender with male and female. So these individuals are for example all male and have been given drug A. First we calculate the mean values we need. We calculate the mean value of each group, so male and drug A, that is 5.8, then male and drug B, that is 5.4 and we do the same for female. Then we calculate the mean value of all males and females and the mean value of drug A and B. Finally, we need the total mean. We can now start to calculate the sum of squares. Let's start with the total sum of squares. We do this by subtracting the total mean from each individual value, squaring the result and adding up all the values. The total mean is 5.4, so we calculate 6 minus 5.4 squared plus 4 minus 5.4 squared to finally 3 minus 5.4 squared. So we get a sum of squares of 84.8. The degrees of freedom are given by n times p times q minus 1. n is the number of people in a group, in our case 5 and P and Q are the number of categories in each of the factors. In both cases we have two groups. The total variance is calculated by dividing the sum of squares by the degrees of freedom. So we get 4.46. Now we can calculate the sum of squares between the groups. For this we calculate the group mean minus the total mean. So 5.8 minus 5.4 squared plus 5.4 minus 5.4 squared and the same for these two values. We get 7.6. In this case the degrees of freedom are 3 which gives us a variance of 2.53. Now we can calculate the sum of squares of factor A. A dash is the mean value of the categories of factor A. So we calculate 5.9 minus the total mean value and 4.9 minus the total mean value. This results in 5. Together with the degrees of freedom, we can now calculate the variance for factor A, which is 5. We do the same for factor B, in this case we use the mean values of male and female and we get the variance of 0.8. Now we can calculate the sum of squares for the interaction. We obtain this by calculating the sum of squares minus the sum of squares of A and B. The degrees of freedom result to 1. For the interaction we get a variance of 1.8. Finally we can calculate the sum of squares of the error. We subtract the mean value of each group from the respective group values. So in this group we subtract 5.8 from each individual value, in this group we subtract 5.4, here we subtract 6 and then we subtract 4.4. This gives us a sum of squares of 77.2. The degrees of freedom are 16. 
and we get a variance of 4.83. And now we calculate the F values. These are obtained by dividing the variance of factor A, B or the interaction by the error variance. So we get the F value for factor A by dividing the variance of factor A by the error variance, which is equal to 1.04. We can now do exactly the same for FB and FAB. To verify, we get exactly the same values with DataTab. 1.04, 0.17 and 0.37. For the calculation of the p-value, you need the degrees of freedom and the f-distribution. So with these three values, you can either read the critical p-value in a table, or as usual, you just use a software to calculate the p-values. You can find a table of critical f-values on DataTab. E.g. for a significance level of 5%, you can use this table. If the red value is greater than the calculated F value, the null hypothesis is rejected, otherwise not. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.